Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses. As we continue with part 27, The Discourse of the Aged Man, Book 5, The Written Word of Kabbalism, Second Period from the Doctrine and Literature of the Kabbalah by Arthur Edward Waite. Book 5, The Discourse of the Aged Man. The prominence given by Rosenroth to the Book of Concealment and its sequels was not without its warrant, as they are certainly the most arresting, I might almost say sensational, of all the tracts embedded in the Zohar. Those which remain to be examined will now be taken in the order in which they are placed in the Kabbalah Denudata, and their inferior or at least more sober interest will appear by the short analyses which will accompany their tabulation. The first to be enumerated is that entitled Saba de Mishputim, Historia de Sen Quodam in Sectione Mishpatini. The term Saba signifies ancient man and Mishpat is judgment referring to Exodus from the beginning of C21. Now these are the judgments to the conclusion of C24. The discourse occurs in the Cremona, in the Mantua, in the Sulzbach, volume 294a. It narrates a conversation between the prophet Elias and Rabbi Simeon ben Jokai on the subject of the ordeals and metempsychosis of the soul to which there are allusions at some length in the Bereshith section of the Zohar proper. Shizek Deloria's elaborate doctrine concerning the revolutions of souls is drawn from this discourse of Elias with the mystic light of Kabbalism. We shall have again to consider this doctrine in connection with later Kabbalism in order to disabuse occultists of the idea that any reasonable view of reincarnation is contained in the Kabbalistic writings. A specimen of the original text may, however, be given in this place, separated from many technicalities which would be burdensome to the beginner. All souls go up with the revolutions or windings that is, are subjected to the law of transmigration. But the children of man do not know the ways of the Holy One. They know not how he judges the children of man every day in all time, how the spirits, Neskamot, the higher soul, anima animse of Christian theology, ascend to be judged before they descend into this world, or again how they go up to judgment after that they have departed from this world, to how many revolutions and mysterious ordeals they, or their essential substances, are subjected by the Holy Blessed One. How many naked souls and how many naked spirits enter the other world, yet not through the King's curtain. How many worlds revolve with them and how the world itself turns about in many concealed wonders. And the children of men do not know, neither do they comprehend how souls revolve like a stone which is cast from a sling, even as it is written. And the souls of thine enemies them shall he sling out, as out of the middle of a sling. But while it is permitted to reveal, now is the time to make known all these mysteries and how all the spirits go out from that great tree and from that mighty river which flows from Eden. But the lesser spirits, Ruachin, Ruach, the anima or Pishi, issue from the small tree. The higher spirit comes from above, the lesser from below, and they are united as male and female. The Kabbalistic division of the soul into five parts has been given in book two of the present work with the necessary elucidations. The basis of the doctrine is set forth as follows in the Discourse of the Ancient One. When the child of man is born into this world, there is appointed to him animated life, nefesh, from the side of the animals, the clean side, from the side of the holy wheels, the ofanim, a Kabbalistic order of angels, assigned by some attributions to chokma. Should he deserve more, there is appointed to him a rational spirit, ruach, from the side of the holy living creatures, chayoth ha-kadosh, another order of angels commonly attributed to Kether, which seems, however, inconsistent with this tabulation. Should he still deserve more, there is appointed to him a higher spirit, even from the side of the thrones, that is, Aralim, the order of angels ascribed to Bina, whence come the higher souls, according to the Bereshith section of the Zohar proper. These three are the mother, the male servant and the handmaid, even the daughter of the king. Should he deserve yet more, there is appointed to him an animal soul, Nefesh, in the way of Atzilnth, that is the lowest essence of the supernal portions of the soul, from the side of the daughter, Yekida, the only one, Jekida is the quintessence, the highest nature of the soul, and the same is called daughter of the king. If he still deserve more, there is appointed to him the rational spirit, Ruach, of Atziluth, from the side of the central pillar, 
that is benignity, the middle pillar of the Sephirotic tree. And he is called the son of the Holy Blessed One, whence it is written, Ye are the children of the Lord your God. Deuteronomy 14.1 And if he deserve even more, there is appointed to him a higher spirit, Neshama, from the side of Abba, the supernal father, attributed to Chokmah in the Atsilutic world, and of the supernal mother, Aima, attributed to Bina in the same world, whence it is also written, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, literally souls of life, Genesis 2, 7. What is life? It is Jah, the divine name attributed to Chokmah, whence we have heard, let everything that hath breath, that is life, that is all souls, praise the Lord, that is Jah, Psalm 156, and in it is Tetragrammaton, that is JDVD, ED, JHVH, perfected. But if he deserves still more, there is appointed to him JDVD, in its full completeness, the letters of which are Jod, He, Vau, He, He, Vau, He, Jod, which is man in the path of Atsiluth. And he is then said to be in the likeness, simulacrum of his Lord, whence also it is said, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, Genesis 1, 28. That is, he shall rule over all the heavens and over all the Ophanim and Seraphim, over all the hosts and powers above and below. When therefore the child of man deserves the nephish, from the side of the daughter Jakida. This is to say, she shall not go out as the men servants do, meaning probably that he shall serve God in his house forever. Exodus 21, seven. This passage is worth quoting not only as an illustration of the discourse in which it occurs, but because it gives a clue to the probable meaning of occultists when they speak of a concealed sense in the Zohar. It is not to be supposed that when Kabbalism divides and subdivides the soul, it means anything else than to distinguish certain essences and qualities therein. In a word, it means what it says, just as modern theosophy does at the present day when it affirms seven principles in man. The concealed sense of the Zohar, as before indicated, is simply the extraction of some method from its vast and confused mass, which at first sight appears altogether delirious, in the present instance, it will be seen that the animistic nature of man has a sevenfold aspect, whereas other Kabbalistic dictarially extend it to ten. When these discrepancies are harmonized, we have the concealed sense of the Zohar as to the inner nature of man. Perhaps we might reach it by supposing that the discourse of Elias really describes the development of mystic experiences in seven stages ending, as it states literally, in the communication of the divine to man. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe and comment and if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Roses links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.